On this episode of Modern Greasy, the teak ceiling of the ambulance is completed along with the addition of the hi-hat LED lights. Not only that, but the max fan roof vent is fully installed along with the full DIY faux shiplap made on the cheap from grooved cabinetry grade plywood. So with the addition of the other teak that was running straight across here, William came through and cut it, and there's a nice little trim ring here for the Max Air fan. And he's in the process of adding in these 12 volt LED lights. And four of the LEDs are currently set up to the vehicle ignition now until the whole solar setup is in. The Max Air fan is all hooked up and ready to go now. So the Max Air fan runs on this remote control here. So if you hit the on button, the lid will open up and the fan will kick on. This here is opening up the lid. So this is a pusher and a puller fan. Go air out, air in. So it tells you the set temperature is 78 and the room temperature. This thing's set to 78 and it gets to like 82 in here. It'll open up before it gets to 82 and vent out the air. The vent is open and the fan is kicked on. So the rack is made out of steel tech rail system with the Allen wrenches that I talked about in the last video. It's about $265 for all the rack components bought at Lowe's. So these flush mounted LED hi-hats here, there's a little bit of a gap, which is kind of janky, but obviously uh, these are gonna come down and there's gonna be some veneer that's gonna be wrapped and stained to match and go up in there. Now tell me about the LEDs that you're gonna do up here because that was pretty cool. So, so this is gonna be the shower. So right instead up. of having a light like that, like the can lights in the shower, I'm gonna take the LED tracks and from whatever the shower door is that goes here, the tracks are gonna go in each one of these voids between each one of these. So basically every one of these slots will be a light and light up the shower. And they'll have caps at and the end. And they'll have caps on them that are frosted. It'll just look like a white strip, but those will actually be the lights that light up the shower. Yeah. So right now we're gonna show you how to drill one of these out because if you have a hole saw and you're trying to drill it through here and you have a gap like that, it's really unusual. So if you take a smaller hole saw and a larger hole saw, you're basically gonna thread the larger one onto the back of the smaller one, put it in a drill and go through it. So the reason he has a smaller pilot bit on there is because that one has to be able to reach where he's drilling. So now I'm centered. I lowered my pilot bit so I don't go through the top of the roof. And, now I'll go... and voila, no holes in the roof. Make sure you back that pilot bit off. That's how you do that. It's really hard to use a hole saw on something like that has a gap. So here is the little LED hi-hat. So this is not wired yet. I got to dig my wire out from up there. I'll connect that in a little while. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. Can we just pop this down so I can show them the springs on the back? And that's all it is. Just these little flappy springs that are on there. Yeah. And the ceiling, the teak is 100% complete on the ceiling. All the lights are all wired in. Looks awesome. The Max Air cool fan looks really, really good up there. This is the switch system for your overhead lights. All right, so you've got these three over here over your kitchen, right? Yeah, over the kitchen area and the walk-in area. So those four, actually. Those okay. Four lights. All right, switch. And these five lights over the bed will be in a switch right here on the dimmer. All right, oh. so this is the faux shiplap. What this is actually is a piece of cabinetry grade plywood that literally William took a circular saw and dropped the blade down and ran it through along a guide so it came out nice and straight. Obviously you could also do it on a table saw, but it came out pretty darn flawless. And this here, and this doesn't really reveal how much of this is curved, the ceiling is curved. You can kind of really see it there. He said he had to make that curve. So William and I were talking about potentially finishing off the roof here and he actually has some butcher block uh, conditioner and we're gonna try it out on a piece of teak here oh dude look at that it's good I got you on video rubbing your wood and they say that Danish oil is one of the best things for it which we're a little worried kind of looks more like there's stain in it it's a bit more dark walnut stain Wow, that's actually pretty great it's less red this is a personal favorite of mine using true oil gunstock finish but 
It might be blasphemy in the teak world, and I might be ruining the teak with it. Boy, it's pretty for a lot of other wood refinishing products. The Butcher Block Conditioner, the Danish Oil, and the True Oil. Now you can see that Mr. Knight built all these little brackets here with pocket jigs, and they're strong as heck. Right now, he's over here working on boxing this end because he's gonna have some cabinets on the other side over there. She is looking fancy. And so over here is where the bed is gonna go. And that's gonna be have a shiplap panel on it. Not gonna really be able to tell where the bed ends and the wall begins, so to speak. So the soffit is in and this brace is going in right now. All right, so we didn't pre-drill the teak and right here where this was drilled out for that split. So lesson learned, pre-drilling is a must because wah wah, but instead of pulling this whole thing down, he's gonna put some wood glue in here clamp that baby tight and you'll never even know that this happened. But lesson learned, sexy would be the word that I use to describe all the work that's going on in here. Sexy. Got it. So the bed, when it folds down, it's gonna be right up between the plywood on this wall and that wall. So when it's up, you won't be able to tell that the bed is there. But I wanna put a, this switch here for the over the, over the bed lights. So, yeah. But so like all your disco lights. And yeah, all. yeah, yeah, all that stuff. The disco so, ball. But I'm gonna, I don't want the plywood to interfere with it, so I'm gonna recess it in the plywood a little bit so it's, you know, it's in. Nice, nice. And then where's that USB? Uh, USB is gonna go on the wall over here. here. That'll be, uh, you know, Ooh. all the way in. Ooh, Ooh, look at that! Ow! I don't know if you got another one down here. So both ends of the couch and both ends of the bed, there's dual USBs. So you could plug it in over here. And your lady will plug it in over there. Yep, all that. And then two of you can plug it in here. So, looking good. And then what's going to go in here, Brotato? Uh, closet. So, we got a drawer here. Um, approximately a 36 inch wide, 36 inch wide by 30 tall. And then a panel up here to for all my displays for the solar and batteries and all that fun stuff. So, the wall's built here. I'll probably put a little bit more framing in there. But then we'll take another piece of ply and obviously this will get notched to go around the wire and go up and take the angle of the ceiling but once it's all in everything will line up and match and we'll have a wall there and that's what it looked like and now the bed will fold down between this wall and that wall nice tight fit go up to here and then be a Murphy bed built into the wall yeah, I just can't get over how good that looks, and it's just a piece of plywood with the glue cut into it. And that's not anything, it's just the thickness of a regular circular saw blade. Yep. Looks it's actually a nickels, nickels distance. Are you going to um, stain that at all? No, I'm going to paint it. Nickel, oh, you're going to paint it white. Nickel with uh, a little bit of blue painter's tape on it. And that's how deep it is. And that's just a saw blade. Nothing it's just a saw blade. And that's when, when you're doing shiplap that's what they, they always say is a nickel's distance nice nice. so down here like this is two different pieces but the nickel slides in there that's the distance between the two pieces and you could have the bed's gonna be blocking most of this anyways but uh you're gonna come through and fill this with wood yeah, I'm always gonna get filling with wood putty sanded before i paint it um and then paint it all paint in these stripes first to get the paint down in there but not let the paint build up in there so that's the not. bed is gonna have a cover on the back of the mattress like you're holding Right, and then we're gonna fold down, you know, obviously come like all the way down to here, be queen size, 60 by 80 bed. And then when it folds up, it'll go all the way up to there, and the lines will match up on the sides, and you know, shouldn't be able to tell that they're a bed there. Sweet! Gotcha, that kind of gives you an idea what the soffit's gonna look like. Well, this one will be permanent, all good painting and everything, and then there'll be a bottom cover that I'll be able to just take a, and pull a screw out if I need to run some wires or whatever. Um, or access or somewhere to hide shoot. somewhere to hide your weed at right 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 i guess that's legal in most states so you don't have to hide it but in florida you do so this is the faucet that will be going into the rv shower head this is what's cool this is the valve body the valve body so this comes off and reveals the part for the on and off the plate this goes. is not your typical stuff you find in a I mean, 
It these is. are for homes, but it's just not super cold in wood. I've for never seen a, a valve body look like that, I guess that was. I'm gonna do there, turn the mixer hot and hot and cold. That is a cool looking. And then this will adjust between bath spout and shower head. But what, what I'll be doing is switching it to bath spout, which will return the hot water back to the tank so I'm not wasting it, turn it back on to shower head and allow the shower head to come back on, not not having to reheat the water. Look at that. Yeah. Spout is crazy. Bath spout's pretty cool looking, but we're not using that, so. And then the shower arm, like this, coming out of the wall. Gotta get it as high as we can get it because obviously we're still dealing with, dealing with um, ceilings. Yeah, we can be six foot and walk oh, in there. Oh, that's a nice low profile then. That's perfect but, for that. You know, if we get this all the way up to the ceiling, hopefully we yeah. can uh, have that come out and still get up underneath it, not have to duck too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice setup, dude. Man, for 130 bucks? Yeah, 135 bucks. We'll make some uh, in the description for that. That's cool. I, I love this valve, and he was saying that this valve can be trimmed back for the depth. It's got a nice little mounting spot. I mean, that's pretty cool. Thanks for tuning in to yet another episode of Modern Greaser and be sure to stick around because there's lots of action coming your way with this ambulance build. William is ahead of schedule and right now as I'm recording this video, the ambulance is over at a radiator slash AC shop where they're disconnecting the inside radiator which for some weird reason is hooked up to the uh, AC underneath the hood. So if we disconnect it now, he'll have zero AC in Florida which sucks. So it's getting completely disconnected and when that comes back, he can really get down to the nuts and bolts of all the bathroom shower and running all the PEX lines for that. So once that's in, it's gonna be a whirlwind of crazy. If it's not already, William is just killing it on this thing and he is booking it. So, hey, tune in, don't miss the next episode. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do and hit the little bell thing, bing. All right, we'll catch you guys later. Bye.